Mushroom Wonderland. How's it going, everybody? This is Aaron Hilliard, Mushroom Wonderland, back with another foraging video. I like doing these videos, just go out into the woods, and I'm not necessarily mushroom hunting because I'm not after anything in particular. Just going to see what mushrooms are growing out here and see if we can name them and ID them. And uh, I try to keep it fresh so I don't repeat the IDs too much in my videos, but some mushrooms are just so interesting that I they show up in a multiple of my video. Just having fun out here in the woods of the Pacific Northwest, uh, Western Washington, just about 200 feet above sea level. And it's a beautiful Northwest fall day. It's pretty crisp out here. And uh, we're just gonna take a walk in the woods. Let's go see what's growing out here today. So thanks for watching Mushroom Wonderland. Hit subscribe, hit that like button if you're getting value out of these videos. And I hope you continue to watch these foraging videos. I am a trustee on the Kitsap Peninsula Mycological Society and a couple days ago I was nominated for Vice President of KPMS, which is pretty cool. I'm also the creator of Mushroom Wonderland here on YouTube and on Instagram. And I've been picking mushrooms in the forests around here for 30 plus years. And yeah, I'm only 41 years old, but so pretty much since I was a kid I started picking mushrooms. And uh, so let's check out what we got growing out here. So check this out. These are some beautiful mushrooms growing here in the PNW. These mushrooms are known as Lacaria amethysto occidentalis. Kind of a fancy name, but look how purple these bad boys are. Aren't those beautiful? So Lacaria is a somewhat common woodland mushroom, a mycorrhizal mushroom here in the Northwest. And uh, these are one of the prettier ones. The more common ones around here are Lacaria lacata or Lacaria bicolor. But the Amethysto occidentalis has this purple everywhere. So the top of the cap, under the gills, and the stem are all this beautiful amethyst color. And you can see why it gets that name. So Lacaria, it's sort of a waxy feeling, dry type of mushroom. Um, these are edible, and you could eat them if you want, although not many people do. But a beautiful mushroom to look out for. And when I say mycorrhizal, that means that it grows in association with a tree. Usually it's these conifer trees here in the northwest that they grow with. And uh, these ones probably liken this fir tree, these fir trees right here. And uh, But a beautiful photogenic mushroom, great one to take pictures of here in the PNW. Lacaria amethysto occidentalitis. Right here, I, I just came across a mushroom. And we got this guy growing here all by himself, just underneath this fern, and this is underneath a patch of alder trees. And uh, if we look at the top, it's really got this viscid layer, this really kind of slimy layer. And it's got this really white margin, the edge of the cap is called the margin. And then if you look at the stipe, it's got all these little danglers, all these little hair looking appendages hanging off of the stipe here. We're gonna pick this to get a better look at underneath. And uh, if you look underneath, it's got these pretty crowded gills under here, really tightly packed gills. And this one's not showing much of the typical ruffling that's growing on the edge of the margin, but um, when these are younger, they'll have a lot of frilly stuff hanging off the edge of the margin. And this is known as the Stropharia ambigua. This one is related to the Stropharia rugoso annulata or the wine cap and this one is uh, an edible mushroom even though flavor is so gross that most people never eat more than one you can find these growing they often grow in troops here I got a couple I got another one growing right here and these caps get pretty get pretty flat as they grow we've got this kind of gray color underneath on the gills, so Stropharia ambigua. Um, not gonna hurt you, but probably not gonna taste very good. He 
sniffing for truffles. No, I'm just kidding, he's not. He probably smells a raccoon or something. So right here, I've come across a flush of little mushrooms that are interesting and pretty beautiful. Right here, first of all, you can see some of these Lacaria lacata growing right here on the side of this little road underneath a lot of pine trees. And, uh, and if I look right here on the hillside, you can see these beautiful mushrooms with these red stems on them. There's one kind of hiding right here. Let's pick this guy out of here and take a look at it. Oh, look at that. Beautiful maroon colored stipe. Kind of a maroon to purplish colored cap. And this really yellow pore surface underneath. And here's some younger specimens. And these are actually a good edible here in the Pacific Northwest. I can see quite a few more growing right here. There's another one right there. And there's another one growing right there, little babies. And uh, oh yeah, a real handsome little guy growing right there. And so these are growing underneath these pine trees, commonly known as the Zeller's Bolete, or Zero Camellus Zellerii. And uh, this mushroom is in the Bolete family, although not Boletus, it's been uh, changed to Zero Camellus, which is uh, one of the subgenuses of Boleticiae. And this is a good mushroom to bring home and cook although not as favorable as many of the other boletes, but one that you should be familiar with, pretty unmistakable because of this red stem. And when I smash my finger into the pores here, I'm not seeing any staining. Uh, some mushrooms will stain blue like that. There we go. Putting those in the backpack and heading onward. Okay, so I'm walking along in the forest and this really bright color catches my eye. And here's an interesting mushroom. Let's have a look at this. I'm gonna flip the camera around. And this one, you might think is a chanterelle. Now let's take a look at, let's look at the underneath of it. Now that does not look like a chanterelle to me. This is a big boy and it does have these kind of gills they're very strange looking and, and they go all the way down to the base. Really a lot of folds and wrinkles. And if you look inside, you see this kind of scaly surface and very funnel shaped. And this is why it gets the common name, the scaly chanterelle or the woolly chanterelle. But uh, the Latin name is Turbinellus flocosus and this is actually a toxic mushroom. So. A false chanterelle so if you're out picking chanterelles and you're new you might come across something like this uh, in the genus turbinillus <clears throat> and it does cause really bad gastric upset and it's also known as the bed ch chanterelle so one to be aware of one to avoid so this mushroom is also a mycorrhizal mushroom we talk about mycorrhizal mushrooms a lot and so this one's grown in association with these big fir and hemlock trees and uh, just wanted to be aware of the scaly vase chanterelle, the woolly chanterelle, the scaly chanterelle, or the false chanterelle, Turbinellus flocosus. Look what we come across here. Really bright red. These are kind of slimy. Look at that rosy stem on that. Beautiful rosy red. That's why it's called the rosy russula or the russula rosea. And uh, I don't think these are good edibles. I think most people just avoid these, but they sure are pretty to look like. They make for a very colorful forest. And you got those white brittle gills under there. And uh, they call it a brittle gill because of the cell structure of these mushrooms. Um, they're closely related to the shrimp russula and the russula breva peas, which is the host for the lobster mushroom. So you could take this stem and snap it like a stick of chalk 
and uh, it's one of the only mushrooms that really do that and it's a good way to identify that it's in the genus Russula. coming down the trail and I come across some pretty cool mushrooms right here check this out folks these bright red guy watch this when I show you underneath the cap what this guy looks like oh man look how red that is and you can see on the stipe it's got this orange rusty color on the stipe so a beautiful red underneath very very red cap it's a beautiful mushroom this one I think is called Cordinaria smithii. And this is a very red staining Cordinarius that is good for dyeing fabric. Um, one of the best for dyeing fabric. So fabric dyers out there, yeah, you love these. So uh, I see a few of them growing here. There's another one there. There's another one back here. And uh, I'm gonna pick these and save them for dye and uh, give them to one of my dyeing friends. Uh, after I take a couple pictures of them because they are a beautiful, beautiful mushroom. So Cordinarius smithii, the red dying Cordinarius. All right, y'all, so I hope you liked that video. There's a few more of the common woodland varieties of mushrooms growing here in the PNW in the autumn. So I hope that uh, that helped you out. Uh, a lot of people are always asking what those lacarias are, so pretty common one. The Zero Camellus Zellerii, or the Zellers Bolete, and that uh, Stropharia Ambigua, also a very striking mushroom in its appearance. Uh, Turbinellus flocosus, watch out for that one, your false chanterelle. And um, I hope you guys are having fun out there in the woods this time of year. Yeah, I know I am. So uh, hit like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.